we are at VGP Effects and Design Studio. We're going to talk to the main man, the Commander in Chief, Vincent Guastini. Today we're going to talk practical effects. Come on in, let's take a look. Here we are with Vincent Guastini, hey, VGP man. FX good Studio. You, good to see you too. Hey, we know Vince. Vince and uh, his compatriots here at VGP worked on every 90s commercial. <laughs> We had an absolute blast on that project. I had so much fun on that show. You guys killed it, and I can see yeah. that uh, some of the uh, effects yep. work. She made it. She made, made it, it into yeah. your your hall of horrors. Yep. So I want to take a step back real quick. You've got you've had VGP mm -hmm. effects and design studio for how many years now? Uh, probably over twenty five. What are some of your uh, your more well known projects? Uh, I would have to say Dogma, Requiem for a Dream, Letters of Iwo Jima, Flags of Our Father, Stephen King's Thinner, uh, Child's Play 3, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Mm -hmm. I was on Saturday Night Live for four years mm -hmm. and I uh, was Will Farrell's personal makeup artist mm -hmm. and, you know, and was nominated for an Emmy on that show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of the gambit, what's been going on. How did you get your start in practical effects, you know? Take us back to the beginning. I would say when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of like Godzilla movies. Uh, uh, Ray Harryhausen was a stop motion master and he did like uh, movies like Jason the Argonauts, the, the Skeleton Army. Famous, yeah, stop yes. motion skeleton. All those stop yeah. motion things. So that was like kind of my first like looking at movies and going, how the hell would they do that? What was it that, that sort of clicked for you when you said, when you thought to yourself, I want to focus on creating practical effects. You know, I want to be a monster maker. What was that for you? The thing. Okay. Yeah, it was the thing. So I went into the theater and I saw it, and there was a scene with a blood test scene. I thought you'd feel that way, Gary. You were the only one that could have got to that blood. We'll do you last. When the guy hits the ceiling during the whole, you know, mayhem that was going on. And I yeah. remember I'm watching the scene, everybody's yelling on screen. There's somebody in the movie seat in back of me, and this guy's yelling. Mm -hmm. And he's like grabbing the seat like this, and he's doing that. And I remember I looked back and I saw him do that. And I was yeah. like, it, it made an impression on me, like, mm -hmm. that the screen can actually do that to somebody. Picture. A that, series of moving yes, pictures. Right. That I want to yeah. do the exact same thing with my work. That's awesome. If someday I could mm -hmm. do that. Can you remember the first practical effect you did, like on your own in your in your basement lab or whatever it was? I'd have to say I did some experimentation of makeup um, on my mother's arm. I did some burns that was in the Grand Illusion book. Mm -hmm. like and I showed gel Tom, a gelatin yeah, burn. Yeah, what well, was actually it was all uh, made of paper bags. Very cool. We'll painted with latex. Mm -hmm. And then painted, and even Tom Savini saw it at a convention, you know, picture of it. He's like, "Wow, that's great!" I go, "Well, that's a copy of your makeup you did in the mm -hmm. burning." Mm -hmm. So he's like, "Oh, wow, mm -hmm. this is great." Yeah, but yeah. I know I had a similar situation when I was a kid. You know, there were movies that I saw that were just pure magic. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really realize that there was a way to do that, and it wasn't until I stumbled upon those books, Grand Illusions One and Two, where I realized there, there's just this thing. There's an industry. But mm -hmm. back then, you find one of these books and it's a holy grail. Yeah, right? it's the information. It's like like mm -hmm. you found like a treasure in our shelf in some library somewhere. Yeah, you in go the home yep. and you're like, oh, I don't do this. But it graduated from there. It graduated from Tom Savini, and then I started knowing about all the other effects artists like Dick Smith and Rob Bottin and Rick Baker. All right, so what does the process look like? You know, from start to finish. Process is usually we get a script. Um, after we get the script, we break it down. Uh, so that we know how many effects are in, are in the show, what we're handling, what we're not handling. Um, and then from there, once everybody agrees what I'm handling and what the bid or budget would be about, we go about doing designs. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's the most important. That's like plotting out a movie, you know, you do everything in prep. Uh, we're doing that with designs. Once we sculpt the features or whatever change we're going to make, it could be an old age, it could be an elf, it could be you know, an ape, it could be whatever. Whatever the designer project is calling for, we take another mold off of that. From there, we run our materials in either silicone or foam rubber, and then we run them in the oven for three or four hours, we bake them, 
and then we pull out our skins. Before when I painted the other hand, that was for silicone. Um, so we had a different set of paints for that. As I said, for the, for the hand puppet that comes out of her chest, it's for weight, so it's made out of foam rubber. And so that has a whole different type of paint, which is acrylic paint. And so I'm using acrylic paint so I broke it down with can each alcohol, and that's so I can put it through an airbrush, and I can airbrush the entire creature. Right now I'm just laying down the base of all the darks and shadows and bringing out the sculpture. As you can see, you know, it was just a light piece of flesh before. I can start, you know, see it come to life. How's the uh, vomit gag gonna work? I have the uh, this right here. <laughs> yeah. And it's a giant syringe. Yeah. And I just put the fluid through and we put the tube right through the puppet's mouth. Oh, and awesome. And you shoot it. Oh, and we'll yeah. spew. What's the stuff? Green. Yeah. Green, um, it's uh, carrot syrup. Oh, okay. Awesome. And the other gr thicker green stuff is hair gel. Yeah, okay. All safe. It's like greeny goo. Action. Cut to another head that we have that we're going to put on a prosthetic face, a melted face. A bunch of goo comes out of that. Give me your hands. You're going to grab onto that. And then you're going to grab it and you're going to pull that off. And the other hand, too. That's it. Go ahead and reach towards your forehead. There you go. There's a piece right there. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cut. All right. Tails in. Tails in. Nice job, Tails in. Good nice job, job. Three, Arkham City, take one. So when we're talking about practical effects, mm -hmm. obviously think people think of creatures, you know, the werewolf transformation of America War mm -hmm. from London. <laughs> that comes to mind. But practical effects also uh, encompasses, say, an old age makeup. Like you transformed Ellen Bernstein in Requiem for a Dream. Correct. Right? Uh, Correct. As a way to the filmmakers to tell this story, this transformation of this character from point A yeah, to point B. Yeah, it's not all exploding heads. It's 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 mm -hmm. it's realism. Exactly. You know, it's it's about, you know, there's one thing that's the thing too, uh, you can do some beautiful monsters and they can be gorgeous. But if you're going to copy real life and you don't do it successfully, which is really hard, you're going to be able to tell and people are going to be like, okay, that's fake. Mm -hmm. So doing old age and doing, you know, a proper thing that's from real life is really, really tough. Mm -hmm. So when you can do something like that successfully, then you know you've done a really good job because nobody can tell. Here's all the tricky subject, right? And the one everyone always wants to know about. Sure. The marriage of practical and visual effects, you know? Is this question has been going on since Jurassic Park came out. The film where the practical effects industry sort of heard the the, the death bell, you know, yeah. and realizing, oh my god, that looks but good. But look at that film, though. The practical's as good that, as the CG. That was my point. That's exactly my point. The practical looks incredible. <laughs> That film is a is a perfect case study for a perfect. marriage between the two, right? Perfect. Because you use practical when you can, which has that that tactile. It's here. It's real. That's cinema. You know, it's moving pictures, uh, and then you blend that with your CG full screen shots, and it becomes this magic trick. You know, in your mind, it's 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 almost impossible to discern. It was the, the most two. beautiful symbiotic yeah. relationship I've seen. <laughs> And I'm hoping on certain projects when it comes to the bigger budget movies that people are screaming for practical that somebody, producer or director, has to sit down and go, we're putting this much to, to practical, this much to CG, and that's the way it's going to be, and we're sticking to it. For young filmmakers at home, how else can they practice this craft, you know? These guys and gals watching. Do how, the how, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Go mm -hmm. go to YouTube and get as much information and, and on the internet as you can mm -hmm. and practice. Also, I think one of the best and probably is the future is is Matt Winston, Stan, those Stan the Winston Stan Winston School. School on YouTube. Yeah. I think that's probably the best mm -hmm. because you have real professionals that were that worked at Stan Winston's and some people that were inspired by Stan Winston or worked in a, a great deal in the industry and mm -hmm. you're getting exactly what the pros do and how they do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's invaluable information. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for your time, and we look forward to see what you do next. Awesome. All right, thank you guys very hey much. Guys, Take bye. Care. Good luck, everybody.